Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. My name is Jörg Michael Grassau. I'm a senior developer in the area of S4HANA Public Cloud ERP. And what I'd like to present to you is ABAP Cleaner. ABAP Cleaner is a tool, a, a plugin for ABAP development tools, which is designed to make your lives as ABAP developers easier because it automates a lot of things that up to now you had to do manually. So let's just take a very look, a quick look at the agenda. As you can see, I'm going to spend most of the time with demos, right? So uh, starting with the motivation, why ABAP Cleaner, and later how to install it, how to use it, how to configure it, and so on. And in between, I'm just going to show you two or three slides on what is the ambition and the project milestones, and later also what is the, the context, like how does ABAP Cleaner relate to other projects, other open source projects that are concerned with Clean ABAP. And uh, we'll also look at available resources and how you can also contribute to the project later. Now, to jump right into it, I thought I'd not want to tell you about my motivation for ABAP Cleaner or um, maybe show you a slide about it, but rather I will, I will really show and demo to you my motivation. Because some time ago, I watched a session with one of the founders of Netflix, and he said one sentence that I believe is really worth thinking about. He said, if you want to innovate, you have to look at pain. So um, I ask you to do that for just two minutes to watch me while I try to turn this method here, not that one, this method here, get total duration copy, to turn that into clean code. And I will start an agile poker clock. And let's see how far I get. So that's about 20 or 30 lines. And let's assume we have the clean code rules more or less in mind. And uh, let me start now. OK, here we go. So I don't like this empty line here. Then the data has a completely useless colon to it. Oh, there is lots of space here and lots of space there. Then I think after the declarations, we want an empty line. Call method should actually be a functional style call now. And then we have receiving. So that, of course, can be left-hand side of the assignment and delete it here. Then actually uh, exporting is the only modifier left. I can reduce that to just one line. That's that's nice now. Okay, now this comment is supposed to be a quotation mark comment. Actually, I've had quite a lot of typos in it. Input parameter is empty. Then this is executable, right? So after that, we are not supposed to have any check statement anymore. So re you reverse the logic. If task is initial or date is initial, then return and if okay. Now here we have an old pseudo comment that is supposed to be a pragma nowadays. Another of those comments which should have the quotation mark. Oh yeah, another typo. Yet another typo. Uh, this end here should actually go to the beginning of the next line, and we have if not, which should rather be if is not. I really prefer symbolic comparison here. Now, what, what's, what's this here? We don't need two dots. This can actually use cool uh, calculation assignment. Then an end if. Then we have this kind of end of comment. Here's another one. Oh, I'm running out of time. Uh, just stay with me for a second. Format the value statement. Oh, how much time have I spent formatting value statements? And then there is a closing bracket, and maybe we pretty print it at the beginning, at the end. Okay, done. Um, yeah, I exceeded two minutes a bit, and I think it was painful to watch. Anyway, it was painful to do, but I've done this quite a bit after um, learning ABAP um, in 2019. And I guess if you've been programming in ABAP, then you've done the same as well, right? Either your own code or maybe the code of 
colleagues who don't care about clean code rules so much or worst thing would actually be legacy code. Um, and doing this over and over again, I really wondered, uh, do I have to do this kind of thing manually, right? Because it's it's the same kind of activity and again and again, and I'm sitting in front of a computer. So I wondered, couldn't I actually teach my computer to do this kind of cleanup? And wouldn't it be wonderful? Let me scroll up a bit because here's another method, just the same method again, right? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could just kind of mark this statement, press one shortcut and then just get it, right? Exactly the thing that I had. Or maybe even mark a whole section, press one shortcut and here you are. Or maybe not mark anything at all, but just press the shortcut and then have the whole method cleaned up. Um, and that's what I would like to present to you. And I think we need no more um, talk about the motivation, right? It would be so much easier to just have one shortcut like that. And I think it would also save quite some time. So that directly basically leads to the ambition of ABAP Cleaner. ABAP Cleaner is supposed to be a configurable tool with the ambition to automate whatever can be automated with respect to ABAP code style. So that was really the, the goal from the beginning to, to really see what are the tasks that I do over and over again and that I could actually teach the computer to do. And please note also the word configurable here. That's quite important for ABAP Cleaner. So the idea is that this tool doesn't impose anything on you. Uh, the idea really is to offer something. And uh, to offer, in this case, up to 60 different cleanup rules and to leave it up to you or your team to decide whether you want them and how you want them. So if you if you look at them and you decide, OK, uh, I like that, but I don't like that one, just deactivate it or configure it differently. So that's an important aspect of that. We, we don't, um, you see, there's passionate discussions about things like, uh, do you want to align type clauses and so on? And um, we don't want to decide that for you, but rather to enable you to, um, to have it the way you want it. Now, very quickly looking at the milestones of the project. So about one year after starting as an ABAP developer, um, really, I got so annoyed at these repetitive tasks that I uh, started to create a standalone application first. So this was in C Sharp first and later in Java. And I basically used the clipboard to move ABAP code into the application and then move the clean code out again uh, into my into my IDE. And that evolved. And I think even after four or five months, um, I already had the first 40 cleanup rules. And then I presented that to some colleagues. And their first reaction was, wow, that's really great. But to be honest, nobody would want to copy their code around, right? So what we really need this is to, to integrate that into the development environment, so into ABAP development tools, IDT. And at that point, I really needed help from colleagues. Um, and they helped me to first move the project into an inner source repository at SAP, and then to really integrate this into ABAP development tools as an optional plugin. So that was in September 2021. And then we could really roll out SAP internally and ask people, um, does this help you? Can you use it? Can you tell us about bugs um, and, and issues and new ideas and so forth? And so that really, I really liked that phase. People were really um, appreciative and, and helpful. And obviously, uh, such a tool really depends on, on cold style. So it was very important to also have colleagues use it on completely different code styles or completely different ABAP releases and have this um, test phase, so to speak, SAP internally before rolling it out publicly. We also added standalone executables. I mean, obviously, there are uh, also colleagues that do not use ADT yet or maybe for some reason can't use it. Um, so the standalone executables, um, we will see that later, uh, again, use the clipboard to move code around. So you can also use the tool in combination with uh, SE80, SAP GUI, and so on. And then ultimately in April of 2023, 
the project was now published on an open source repository, which we are going to see in a minute. Okay, and, and there I'm actually at this open source repository. We are going to uh, post this link, of course, github.com SIP above cleaner. And if you go to the readme of that and scroll down a bit, you will find the section requirements and installation. Um, so I assume you are using ADT, so we don't use the, uh, so we don't look at the install ADT now, but really to get ABAP Cleaner into your ADT is very simple. All you do is you copy this link to your clipboard, copy link, in your ADT, you go to help install new software, and then you enter this link here. So down here, you now see ABAP Cleaner for ABAP Development Tools. You check that, you click Next, and you follow the, just the steps of the wizard, uh, re restart ADT, and then you have it. So it's really easy, just a few steps. And the proof that you have it is that if you then open ABAP code in your ADT, you will find in the source code menu these two menu items, clean up with automated ABAP Cleaner and clean up with interactive ABAP Cleaner. And that's obviously also what you already saw earlier uh, in my first little demo. Now, if you don't or can't use ADT, um, then you can go for the standalone version. And to do that, you find here on the right-hand side of the GitHub repository, the releases section. And uh, the first one is of course, always the latest release. And there you will basically be able to download zip archives for your uh, operating system, extract that. And then for example, in the case of Windows, you just have an ABAP cleaner exe inside that, which you can double click and start. And then um, you have, I have got down here, you can start that. And then you really have a standalone application here on Windows, which works on the clipboard. But let me close that now because we are going to uh, look at it in my detail. Now, let's assume we've installed it now. How do we use it? That's actually really simple. Um, what you do is basically inside your, ABAP, um, inside your ABAP code document, you select some se section of code, and then you simply use the menu source code clean up with automated ABAP cleaner, or use the shortcut control four. It's not control F4, but control four. So let me do that. I highlight that and press control four, and there you are. And this can be done on any section. You don't have to, to mark complete statements. Actually, if I only mark one line or even one character, that's enough. Then the whole ABAP statement will be cleaned up. Or you can mark a section of code. Or if you don't mark anything, then it will clean up the method that you're currently in. So control four will now clean up the sole uh, test ABAP cleaner method up to this point. Or alternatively, uh, you can, of course, just press Control A to select the whole code document that you have, press Control 4, and then everything is, is cleaned up. Um, but we've done that, like the approach of first just cleaning one method, because that's the object that's on your transport, right? So in order to avoid um, having too many objects on your transport that may maybe actually you didn't want to touch, uh, the default setting is just to clean up the method that you are in, or in case of uh, the definition section. So here, for example, I'm in the private section. I press control four, then that would be cleaned up. Okay, that's the uh, that's the automated cleanup, control four. But I assume if you want to get started with ABAP Cleaner, it may be better to first take a look a bit at what is it really doing? What, what are the changes to the code? So for that, let me go to a slightly uh, larger code document here. Um, actually, I wasn't sure to be honest whether I could show SAP code here. Um, so what I did, I actually created a small, um, small code here that would be able to generate a Sudoku and then with F8 to solve the Sudoku, right? So this is my own code. It's no SAP code that I'm showing here. Uh, but anyway, it's a large code document with uh, 1,800 lines. And now let's pretend I want to get to know ABAP Cleaner with that. So 
let me just mark everything here. And then I go to the menu source code cleanup with interactive other cleanup. So this will open this window. And uh, as you can see here, maybe I scroll down a bit, get, getting more interesting here. Um, you see a diff view, right? So the left-hand side is the code as it was before, and the right-hand side is the code as ABAP Cleaner would suggest to clean it. And um, you see the typical colors here, right? So here, for example, it, um, it suggests to remove these empty lines here. So they are in red here. Here's a yellow line showing that this line was changed somehow. So it uh, suggests to remove the space here. And here we have a calculation assignment plus equals. And uh, what did it do here? Oh yeah, remove the two dots at the end. Then there is an end of comment here, just repeating the method name. You're not supposed to have that. What else? Um, here's the uh, self-reference me, which is uh, not needed. Here we have a pragma in a weird position, right? It's moving that to the end of the line. And we we'll scroll further down, another calculation assignment. Uh, here it's actually casing, upper lower case, empty lines again. Let me see what else do we have. Oh, yeah, a check in a loop. You're not supposed to have that because people really get confused about that. So you see it automatically changes the check to if not continue. And not meaning in this case that above true is changed to above false. And that's actually nice because it also reduces the nesting deaths here, right? So you can continue here um, at a lower indentation level. Here it even found a, a typo. You see possibility, difficult word. It moved the not to is not bound and so on. So um, you see lots of different types of cleanup rules that were used here. And if you note here on the right hand side, I have uh, several options to influence the display. So for example, often methods are not properly indented. So all these lines are changed just because of the indent. And uh, maybe that's uh, kind of too much. So I could actually remove this tick to not highlight the indent changes. So I can concentrate on the, um, on the text changes, so to speak, right? And uh, maybe another category is inner space changes like here. Um, that's maybe not so very interesting. So you can also remove that highlight. And uh, now you get down to upper lowercase changes or the text changes, which are kind of really changing the uh, the logic even, or not the logic, but uh, the, the syntax of the statements and so forth. So with that, you can very quickly um, see what ABAP Cleaner would do to your code in this diff view. And actually, you cannot only see it, but you can also influence it. So if I mark some section of code here, let me mark these 20 lines maybe, then you see here on the right-hand side, ABAP Cleaner gives you the cleanup rules that were used or are suggested in the current uh, section. And maybe for, for whatever reason, you don't want a rule at this place, right? For example, this calculation assignment operator, maybe you don't want it, so you just deactivate it. So that's locally, right? It's not deactivating this uh, completely, but um, it is just telling our cleaner, okay, don't use this rule in this place. Or this moving the end to, to the line start, okay, let's deactivate that, um, and so forth, right? But you see, um, even in 20 or 30 lines, it's actually using quite a lot of rules uh, to, to improve the code. And you can get to know them here and, and also, uh, change change whatever our cleaner is suggesting here. And then in the end, if you've uh, looked it through or if after a while you say, okay, it seems to make sense, I trust what it, this program does, then you click apply and close. And then your code changes would really be moved back into the ADT editor that you came from. Or alternatively, you can of course press cancel and then everything will be discarded and your code is just at its, uh, as it was before. So that's the uh, basically the interactive cleanup. And my my assumption, also recommendation for you, um, if you're new to ABAP Cleaner, would be maybe you start with this first to really see what's happening and uh, hopefully build trust in what ABAP Cleaner does. And also with that, you might discover, okay, there's always this cleanup rule, which I don't agree with. I don't want that. And then you can, of course, change the configuration to your needs. I will show you how to do that in a minute. And 
I guess that after some time, if you configured Aba Cleaner the way you want, and if you build trust in it, then you will probably just uh, use Control 4. So after some time, you'll probably just uh, use the automated cleanup um, and, and just uh, hopefully be happy with the result. Uh, but you can, of course, always come back to this um, interactive cleaner here as well. Uh, just to, to look at the other um, options here on the screen. So you can see here that ABAP Cleaner offers different profiles. So a certain configuration setting of ABAP Cleaner is called a profile. And ABAP Cleaner is uh, shipped, so to speak, with two profiles. One of them is the default profile. And another one is the essential. So that's a reduced version, so to speak, which just activates those ABAP cleaner rules, which are recommended or explicit, explicitly demanded even by the clean ABAP style guide. Um, we will come to that uh, later. So essential profile actually means about half of the rules that ABAP cleaner offers. And default pro profile is more or less all the rules that ABAP cleaner has on offer. But you see there are also more profiles because I can just create my own. Maybe I have a dedicated profile for test code or maybe for some cleanup task, I just want to use a very narrow selection of cleanup rules um, to, for some specific purpose. So we will see in a minute how to create those profiles. Um, one thing um, to know is that the profile that you set last here in the interactive cleanup that's also the one that is used in the um, in the automated cleanup. So if I set essential here, and if I leave the screen now, then the next time I just press control four, I will be using the essential profile until I return to the UI and maybe then switch it back to, to whatever other profile. Also, you see here as a second option, the default cleanup range. Um, as I mentioned before, um, on default, ABAP Cleaner will always just clean up the current method that you're in. But you may change that uh, to just the current statement, maybe, or to the entire class that you're in, or even the whole document uh, that you've added, uh, that you've um, opened in the ADT editor. So you config can configure that. But I think most people use the current method approach here because that's kind of matching one object on your uh, transport requests. And then another important app option here is restrict rules to the syntax of a certain ABAP release. So if you say work with an older ABAP release like 753, let me quickly find a calculation assignment here. Yeah, so plus equals one. This is not possible in the release prior to 7.54. So if I say restricted to 753, then ABAP Cleaner recalculates everything and doesn't do this replacement because it will otherwise give you a syntax error in an older system. And uh, you can go up to 750. Don't worry if you happen to work on an even older release. This is just because none of the cleanup rules um, really makes a difference in even older releases. So um, 750 also means 702 or whatever uh, old ABAP release you might be uh, working on, but hopefully you're on your releases. And then of course you can use all the cleanup rules that are activated and possible for that release. Actually, if you open ABAP cleaner from ADT, then it will automatically determine the release that your code or, or your um, current system has and, and restrict it automatically to that. You could only use that to further restrict it if you intend to maybe downport your code to an even older release uh, at a different time. Okay, so that's about the release. It, it might be important to you, but I guess um, uh, it, you won't use that very often after uh, configuring it once. Then you saw incremental search. So at any point I can press control F and then just uh, start typing and uh, to, to find any text that I uh, want to find. Or to navigate here, could also just type in uh, a line number, say 777. Um, oh no, actually, I have to quit incremental search. Type a line number, 777, and it will take me to the line number. That's also uh, that's always meaning the left hand side uh, line numbers. So that's basically what you find in in this screen, and you also have a few view, view options like uh, zoom in to make the text a bit larger. Um, you can highlight declarations. 
So the data statements, the field symbols, and so on. Um, if you like that, you can also highlight write positions. Then you will get any place where variables changed or potentially changed will be marked in red. That's sometimes quite useful, actually. And you also have a help menu, for example, showing you all the navigation shortcuts that are available, right? So, so here's basically the com documentation on this main window with a list of all the shortcuts that you have and basically explaining everything in, in more detail. Um, and release notes would, would uh, show you changes uh, since the last release. Okay, so that's basically using ABAP Cleaner. Let me very quickly show you about the, let's go back to ADT, um, show you about the standalone version. So if you use uh, SubGUI or SE80, then obviously you can't use the ADT plugin. Instead, what you do, you install the standalone version, and then you can open it, the abacleaner.exe. And what you have then is the ability to just paste code into it. So you can just uh, take code from a clipboard or actually even from a file. So let's, uh, I'm not in SubGUI currently, but let's pretend I was, right? So um, I, I will just quickly copy some code into the clipboard. And now I can paste it into Abba Cleaner and it will do stuff on it. Um, so you could paste um, a whole method or form, but you could as well also just paste a, a little section of it. Um, and then you uh, just copy it back to your sub -query. So that's basically the clipboard approach. Um, it's not as, um, as easy as the ADT plugin, but nevertheless, I think it will save you a lot of time if you work with sub -query. Okay, now let's get, uh, get back to this. Source code, or let me mark everything. Source code, clean up with interactive other cleaner. So this is again the approach from, from ADT. And now about configuring other cleaner. So basically that's uh, the button here. And as you will see, using this configure is uh, also a very good way to get to know other cleaner. Because um, in this menu, you will basically have a list of all the available cleanup rules here. So you see currently 57 out of 60 rules are active in this default profile here. And um, you can now start looking at them. So, so if I click on one of the rules here, then all the rest of the screen here on the right hand side will basically show details on that cleanup rule. We're going to look at those in a minute. Um, and all the settings made here in, in this list of cleanup rules and also made here in the options. So you see some rules have uh, come with op options here. All those settings are basically together make one profile. So that would be my default profile. Um, if I click here on the essential profile, then that would be the selection of rules and configuration for the essential profile. And as you saw earlier, I also have um, more profiles here, but that's the two profiles that are basically shipped with ABAP Cleaner. And uh, as you can see here, you have full uh, control here to create, copy, delete, rename, import, export profiles, just to, as you like, right? So I could say default profile, copy it, give it a new name, default to, and then I have another profile and, and configure that completely independently from the first, sec first one. Um, but let me delete that now because I don't use it. Okay. Now, let me go to the default profile. Abba Cleaner, um, as you uh, already saw from the introduction, I think is constantly evolving, right? Because people give us uh, helpful feedback. We find uh, bugs occasionally. We add new options. We add new cleanup rules. Um, okay, now let's... Um, let's take a quick look at the available cleanup rules that we have. Um, now, let me click here and maybe first look at what's there. So basically, you have the rule titles, standardized empty lines with a method in this case. Then there's a description saying a bit what the cleanup rule does. Then next is that you actually have references. So many of the rules are based on the clean ABAP style guide. So you can click those. 
And this will take you directly to the section in the clean up style guide that demands whatever this rule does, right? So uh, there's examples here and some more explanations. So I think that's quite, quite useful sometimes to look that up. And uh, let me find another example. Yeah, so it uh, references the clean up style guide, but you could also have a reference to the clean code checks. So this is code pal for ABAP. And if that one also has a related uh, check rule, then that's linked here as well. And then there are sometimes references to the ABAP keyword documentation and so forth. Then you also have um, rules that, that have options, so you can influence them. And they always come with an example um, of, of what the rule does. So, um, and you also see that the rules are grouped into several sections, so empty lines, um, for example, spaces, declarations, the rules concerned with syntax, with commands, uh, basically rules mimicking the pretty printer, and finally the group of alignment rules. So starting with empty lines very quickly, right? We already saw that um, ABAP Cleaner standardizes the empty lines. So you're not supposed to have two empty lines or even three of them, and you don't need empty lines at the beginning and the end of the method and so on. So it kind of uh, standardizes those. Same for lines between methods and classes. So there's a huge gap here, but no gap here. And ABAP Cleaner is going to standardize that into three here depending on your configuration. If you change that, then you will immediately see in the example how the result looks like. Um, same for empty lines and class definitions. So <laughs> I, I never uh, understood why there's always this notorious comment, um, do not include other source files here. So I think this can really go away. Our cleaner removes that if you like. Um, and also, uh, there's odd formatting here, so it's kind of standardizing that as well, and also introducing empty lines between different kinds of declarations. So there's a class data block here, a data block here, a methods block, and it's all tidied up, right? Um, then regarding spaces, now let me highlight the changes again. So um, here you have useless spaces in parentheses. And sometimes there are missing spaces between parentheses and um, quotation marks. Um, so it's doing all that. And as always, you can configure it, right? You can uh, change the options just the way you like them and you want them. Close bracket is line end. That's uh, explicitly demanded by the style guide. Removing spaces before commas and uh, period put spaces around common comment signs. So this, for example, is not demanded by the style guide, but I think it's nice to have that consistent. Um, so our cleaner enables you here to just put spaces uh, at the beginning and at the end. Then there's a rule that removes needless spaces. So that's actually quite some thought in that. Uh, let me deactivate the highlight here. So here, for example, you have needless spaces before the assignment operator and after it, but it seems that um, intentionally these uh, decimal places are aligned, right? So our cleaner realizes that and it removes the really removes the needless spaces, but keeps what seems to be intentional. Same here, right? So this is uh, the equal signs are aligned even across this whole section. So our cleaner doesn't remove all the spaces but tries to figure out which of those were intended. And, and those are kept and the others are with this cleanup rule are removed. Then regarding declarations, you can unchain declarations. So instead of using the colon, have constants twice and uh, same for data and field symbols and so on. That's again, I guess a rather contested rule. So just align with a team whether you want it or not. Then there's a rule to rearrange declarations. So you see in the code on the left-hand side, it's really a mess, right? So the, there's a declaration, then there's an executable statement, and a declaration again, then a constants declaration. And our cleaner actually organized that uh, neatly into a constant section, a data section, and it even uh, organizes them into the order in which the variables are used. 
because that's uh, usually a very nice uh, way also to read these declaration sec sections. You have a rule to delete unused variables. Um, this one actually even looks out for comments. So let's see, for example, this field symbol, ls commented out, is used, but the code is currently commented out. So ABAP Cleaner doesn't remove this, but um, just comments out the declaration as well. So you can configure that uh, up here, whether you want to comment out the declaration, to completely delete it, or maybe add a comment saying uh, to do the variable is assigned, but is never used. Um, that's uh, sometimes a very useful hint. Sometimes there are copy errors leading to this um, and so on. Then you can simplify declaration chains, or remove unless colons. Then there are uh, there's the way of declaring types implicitly. So TYB parenthesis five is actually a short for type C length five, and it's much better readable to actually have that. So our cleaner expands that. A rather new construct is to have a declaration with final for immutable variables, which are only um, written to in this very place in the code. So that can automatically be introduced. You see here that actually um, the examples sometimes also give some more hints and explanations. So in some cases cannot be changed into final, and the examples would give you some information on why and why ABAP Cleaner keeps those cases. Uh, obviously, we will never want to uh, to introduce syntax errors into ABAP code, um, and so so these are really designed carefully to not do too much, of course. Then you have the escaping with this um, with a sign which can actually be removed in most cases. So the exclamation mark is actually only needed if min max sum if that's an ABAP word, and strictly needed if you have an importing parameter with the name of exporting. So uh, this will actually even give a syntax error. But in most cases, you can actually remove it and. I think ADT doesn't uh, produce it automatically. Then there is a method to remove empty class definition sections, at least in local classes, to add missing parameters to ABAP documentation, to remove the language definition on uh, ABAP doc, uh, because actually that's um, that's not very useful because anyway, you can only write the short text in the language of the object, right? In, in the uh, language that's defined, the, the original language for the object. So actually this addition is, is not, uh, not saying very much. Then now we are moving to the uh, syntax rules. So there's one cleanup rule, which will change asterisk comments into quotation mark comments, which is demanded by the style guide. And this rule actually distinguishes between comments that contain textual information, so those are changed, and comments which contain code. So there's um, some, some logic in it to distinguish code from text, and you might want to comment that in with the uh, appropriate shortcut at a later point in time, so this is not changed. But whenever our cleaner detects, okay, this is actual text, it will introduce the quotation mark here. Then we already saw that um, the end of comments, which basically just repeat the name of the loop variable or the name of the method, uh, those are supposed to be removed uh, by the style guide. You can replace the pseudo comments, uh, the extended check comments with the pragmas. Not all of them, right? So the uh, code inspector CI comments, there's no equivalent for that. So that's kept, of course. But those for which we have pragmas uh, that are th those are transformed. Um, pragmas can be in funny positions. Actually, many people don't know where exactly a pragma has to go. So ABAP cleaner moves it to the place. Here, for example, the needed is wrong, so it has to be moved up um, to be part of the loop statement. Uh, then there's a nice rule. I, I like that one. Um, so this 
correct frequent typos and comments, right? So I actually did an investigation on that. I I um, checked tons of um, code for typos and comments. And uh, here's my list of the top 12 typos that I found in, in many tens of megabytes of code. Uh, the top one is weather. It's very difficult to, to spell. And uh, then the next one is occur with all the ways you can write it wrong and successful and necessary. And there are so many ways of writing the word structure wrongly. Uh, so those are corrected. Always, uh, of course, only if it is clear what word was originally intended. Um, so that's done in comments. If you have a typo in a literal here, uh, that's maybe not as trivial because uh, there might be um, a text element behind that. So in that case, usually ABAP Cleaner would just add a to-do comment. But you can also change that behavior here. You can change, say, change directly, add a to-do comment, or keep unchanged. Then equal sign changing. I haven't seen much of that, but that's also an explicit style guide rule to resolve that into uh, several commands. Um, you see here, if the rightmost expression is complex, then it is not repeated, right? So the 42 here is repeated in both cases, but complex ex expressions wouldn't be repeated, but you then have L equals M, K equals L, and so forth. Then we've seen that, pre uh, preferring calculation assignment operators. This is a very nice thing to do automated, because if you try to do it manually, you always get cases like this one, where you tend to change it because you overlook that LV value isn't the same as IV value. Uh, so automating this kind of thing really also saves you from making errors. Then preferring symbolic comparison operators, preferring is not to not is, that's also a clean code check, obviously moving uh, the end or the or from logical expressions to the beginning of the line because it's much better readable then. Removing empty commands. Actually, if you look at that, I mean, it's horrible, right? But um, this is syntactically correct ABAP code. You can really do horrible things uh, with these signs, but they are completely useless and uh, can be removed. Shorten value statements. So that means here, for example, you have A equals two in all cases, and you can actually extract that to be a common assignment at the beginning. Same here, right? You have, uh, I think this defines two rows in a table, and quite a number of these assignments are the same. So they can be extracted to the beginning, and then actually the whole statement is shorter. Removing the self-reference me, omitting receiving. So instead of having receiving such and such, you can put that in front, as we also saw in the first demo. Omitting the optional exporting. Now we are coming to the section of commands. So commands means that uh, real ABAP commands are converted into different commands. So here you have a, a check, which is transformed into if not return. And you can determine yourself. So the style guide demands that um, checks can only come after declarations. So they can not come after an executable statement like clear. Um, you might have different opinions on that. So you can optionally say, okay, keep check statement, never, always uh, change them. Or keep them at method start before the declarations or keep them after the declarations or uh, keep them after declarations and clear statements. So I think there's good arguments for any of these behaviors and uh, you can just align with your team, which you think is best. By the way, if I um, change the options here and forget what they were before, I can just click on default and I get default settings here. Then um, converting check in inside loops, that's actually always demanded by the style guide um, because it confuses people um, to have check in this place and check in a loop and they kind of behave a bit differently. So you're always encouraged to change that into uh, if not continue. So obviously the logic always have to be has to be negated. And you can see here that ABAP Cleaner actually determines um, whether the logic gets simpler by it. So and not equal is, of course, more complicated than equal. 
So it's nice actually to change it into that logic. But in other cases, um, you would actually um, make the logic more complicated. And in such a case, a bug cleaner can just introduce a not and an opening parenthesis and then put the unchanged logic inside that. So you can see here that um, you can even um, determine this behavior, right? Uh, the way ABAP Cleaner negates that. And I, I think it makes sense really to try to make it as best understandable as possible, which means to have as few knots in it as possible, basically. Then you can replace long if blocks. So for example, this if block here spans the whole loop and it would actually be more, much more readable to have an early continue here, right? So you say, uh, if the row was already processed, then just continue with the next loop cycle. And then you save indentation here. Same for this if. It's uh, a bit longer actually, two, two lines more, but it really adds to readability. The same is for methods. So this if statement actually goes to the end of the method. And I think it's much nicer to have an early exit here and only then, so it's typically like if the table is empty, then there's nothing more to do and so forth. So um, you can very quickly handle those cases and then continue with leftmost alignment for the regular case. Then we've seen this uh, replace call method with a functional call, replace create object with a new constructor, all those new concepts, right? Re place race exception type with race exception new. Then there's the obsolete add to subtract from and so on. So those are uh, changed. If you have an older um, ABAP version and you can't have those calculation assignments, you can also say, um, to, you want to replace it with A equals A plus such and such. So uh, then you would still get rid of the add to, but uh, obviously have this a bit longer syntax. Then uh, replacing move to with a straightforward assignment, replace translate to lower, translate to upper, translate using to this new form with the built-in translate function, which is uh, actually really much nicer to read if you put them uh, below each other. Then sometimes in tests, you have this um, assert equals to above true, assert equals to above false. So obviously there's a dedicated assert true and assert false for that. And same for assert equals of zoo sub RC. So there's again a dedicated assert for that. Then there is a method, um, a cleanup rule, which introduces an, an assert class. So this actually um, would have to be implemented by you first. So maybe you, you are using component ABC. This is the name of your components uh, assert class. And then um, instead of having these hard-coded asserts, which really dump, it is actually advisable to have a assert class, which uh, then has the typical calls of assert true, assert false, assert bound, not bound, and so on, um, because you can actually write tests for that. Uh, so you can catch the assert and then also cast, uh, test that these cases really work and, and the asserts really do what they should do. So it's basically, if you look at the clean up style guide, it's the rule write testable code. So that was that. And uh, then very quickly, of course, uh, what the pretty printer does, it's basically two rules in ABAP cleaner, uh, converting upper and lower case and indenting of lines. So why are we doing that if the pretty printer already does it? Basically, because um, I think with ABAP cleaner, you hardly need the pretty printer anymore. So instead of pressing shift F1, um, basically you can press control four. And with that, everything that the pretty printer does is also already done by ABAP cleaner. So I actually don't use it anymore. Um, maybe for some reason uh, you want to do it too, uh, to use it too, then of course um, you could deactivate them or basically they, they do the same at one time. And then of course there's this huge section of alignment rules. So 
we can align ABAP docs. So this is much better readable here, right? If, if there is a, um, an alignment here, we can align methods declarations. So um, I personally um, like, turn this off for a second. I actually like this much more concise format where you don't uh, use an extra line just for the importing or changing keyword. So I think this is much more concise. And instead, you could add an empty line between methods, at least between those that have uh, that spend multiple lines. Um, I really like that style, but there's lots of configuration here to really adjust that to your needs. Obviously, unfortunately, if somebody in your team uses uh, SE80, then um, SE80 is going to, to change it back. Uh, I am not aware of any way around that. Um, maybe you can uh, win your colleagues over to finally use ADT. Then uh, methods for testing are, of course, much easier to read if you line them this way. Same for methods redefinition, much shorter here. And aliases can be aligned nicely. Then align declarations. Now, this is a contested one, I, I think. Again, uh, personally, I, I do like, I, I find it more readable to have this kind of alignment with the type and, and so on. But if you don't like that, then there is lots of options, right? So you can say, okay, um, we have a chain here and we just want to align it up to the type. We don't want to align the value as well. Or maybe we just want to align the name and the type is then condensed. Um, yeah, many people also prefer that. So you have full control here. Uh, and ABAP Cleaner finally now also offers the possibility to do the same with non-chains. So um, in my team, people just like to use change because pretty printer will then do the alignment for them of the type clauses, but ABAP Cleaner can do that uh, even without chains. So that's not really important anymore. Then you're supposed to align assignments to the same object. So if all goes to LS struck, then you should align the assignment here. Align keywords with the second word of the first line. So here, for example, this assigning is actually looks like it already belongs to the loop body, but it belongs, belongs to the loop statement, right? So it's better to align it with the at. So that's quite a nice way, I think, of, of making it look neat. You can align clear, free, and sort statements and also make sure that uh, each variable goes on one line here, depending on configuration, of course. You can align parameters and components. So that's a rule that's really hugely used. Value constructors. Um, now you see if you have a value constructor that actually uses full rows here that just all fit in one line, ABAP Cleaner keeps those. So because I think it's a very nice tabular way of showing things. And ABAP Cleaner even allows you to go a bit over the normal line length for that, right? So you have an extra setting here. Maximum line length would be allowed to be 160 characters for those tabular cases. If you say, no, not for me, I strictly want 120, well, then this is what you get. Um, yeah, you can decide for yourselves if you like that or not. Um, and more, more options here. Uh, just try them out, right? So the examples are always designed in a way uh, that you can see whenever you click something, you will immediately see the effect of it. And I think with the examples, you will then quickly determine which way you like best. Also, there's the way to paste in your own code. So if you want to know, okay, align parameters, how does that look on my code? You just put the code to the clipboard and paste it in here. Let me see, I probably still have that other code. Okay, this doesn't do anything here, but you could paste your own examples and then see what the rule does on your example, or then revert it back to default. And then uh, to, to um, end that, we have the way of aligning logical expressions. So this is really aligning logical expressions by operator preference, right? So uh, let me find an example here. Um, 
So obviously the end is uh, at the lowest level of preferences. Then you have the, the parenthesis and inside that you have the or. Or in this horrible example here, the, the equiv is the lowest level. Then you have an or, which is kind of this or that and so on. And that's then reflected in the alignment. I hope you don't have um, logical expressions like that. But if you do, then this alignment really helps understanding what's what's going on here. And finally, align conditional expressions. So a cont uh, with when then else. And you see there are again several cases. So this is a one liner here. Then you could have the simple cases or even the tabular cases where you have the when and then in, in column format, so to speak, or maybe the then goes on distinct lines. But in each case, ABAP Cleaner kind of offers a li layout, um, which hopefully is better readable than uh, than uh, what gets in. Um, so this, this has been quite some investigation to see how do people actually align font conditions um, and uh, how, how can we format that within the given uh, vertical vertical space, the horizontal space, uh, to look uh, readable. Yeah, so that's a very quick walkthrough of the 60 cleanup rules that we have. And you will see that after a while, this gets enhanced, right? So people um, post new ideas of new options or new cleanup rules, and uh, a new version might actually carry new uh, cleanup rules. And to keep track of that, we have this highlight feature. So you could say, um, now show me what has been added since the original open source release of ABAP Cleaner. So here you see that since version one, um, published on the 21st of, uh, of April in 2023, these rules have been added. So that's the rule, the green ones, right? So a line clear has been added and remove end of comments has been, has been added. And then the yellow cases show that to this rule, some configuration has been added. So these two options were added because someone said, okay, I need this uh, to get it the way that, that we need it in our team. Here an option has been added and so on. So with that, you can um, easily keep track of what happens. And maybe you want to uh, also align your team with that, right? So you say, okay, I've last looked at ABAP cleaners at some point in May. Okay, what has changed? Then you look at all these settings and you set them the way that you want them or your team wants them. And then you can kind of roll out the ABAP Cleaner profile to your team by exporting them or asking the people to then import the profile. So that's basically just a small file. Um, some teams, I think, also even synchronize the profile folder, right? So if I click that, uh, then you see that basically uh, it's a specific local folder on your computer. And if you synchronize that with whatever Git up uh, or, or some other means, then you could actually by that technically align that between several colleagues. Or just, uh, like I said, export them and ask others to, to import the profile. You can also um, use this to say, okay, now actually what's the difference between the default profile and the essential profile? Then this will basically show you Okay, this uh, is activated here, but not activated in the essential profile. Here it's the other way around. And then in the yellow cases, some of the options are different. So with that, you can kind of compare your profiles and also compare um, uh, default and essential and so forth. And I would recommend you to really always uh, look at the changes and then say features added after v1.5. So that's the most recent version, because if now we get an update to 1.6, our cleaner will automatically show you in an highlight here, which rules have been changed uh, or enhanced or added in the meantime. So that's nice. And then you can set it to v1.6 and so on. Um, one important tick is also this one, um, automatically activate new features after updates. So if new features come in, then you might be uh, kind of positive to just say, OK, um, I probably like the defaults. Let's just take them on. Or in a different profile, you could say, oh, no, I want to check them first using this highlight feature. And only then 
I myself decide whether to activate it or not. So this is basically um, uh, says whether the update behavior is to take on board everything that's new or to be more cautious and be able to check it first. And like I said earlier, you can always use this menu help show release notes to keep track of what has been added in the meantime. Right, so that's basically an overview of what you can uh, see in the configuration menu. And as you saw, it's also a very nice way to get to know ABAP Cleaner and, and to see what exactly do the rules do and play around with the options and so forth. Um, and in the end, uh, obviously, you can either save the profiles and uh, uh, and exit this menu, or also you can cancel. And with that, everything that you might have changed uh, will be discarded in all the profiles that you use. So this is my quick tour. Let me go back to the slides of how to install ABAP Cleaner, how to use it, and uh, also how to configure ABAP Cleaner. And uh, as I mentioned several times, you will probably want to align this configuration with your team and with everybody uh, that works on the same code, because it really makes sense, of course, to have an aligned and, and the same uh, kind of uh, configuration for, for what you do with the cleanup rules. Now, one more thing that I would like to very shortly speak about is the context of cleanup up projects. So you might know that in the context of Clean ABAP, there are several projects around. They are uh, all open source, um, both from initiated from SAP side, but there are also uh, more open source projects uh, from the community. And we are sometimes asked, okay, how do they relate to each other? So I'm trying to visualize that here a bit. Um, imagine, so this circle is Clean ABAP. So that's all that you could do to clean code uh, into clean ABAP. Then the first thing that you can do about clean ABAP is to describe it, right? So you basically create a style guide, and that would be the clean ABAP style guide, famously, which tries to describe what does clean ABAP look like. And um, I don't know if you are familiar with that page. It's definitely worth a read. I opened it already earlier. It's a very, very long page, but a nice read um, on all sorts of things that might be interesting on, uh, on clean up up. And um, yeah, you see the, the table of contents it's here in the beginning. And as you saw, ABAP cleaner refers to that. So basically this is really the central point of uh, looking up what are the agreed rules on, on clean up up. And there's really a sophisticated process um, of aligning and reviewing these rules before they get in this style guide. So I'd say the style guide is kind of the authority on, on what does clean ABAP uh, look like and which rules have we agreed on. And it's basically describing it. Then there is a smaller circle inside that, which I would call check. So that's the part of clean ABAP that you can actually use tools for to check whether you observe it, right? And that's basically the what CodePal does. So for example, CodePal would say, um, yeah, you are having 70 attributes in your class and that's far too many. Or uh, the nesting depth is too high in this case uh, and so forth. So you can run automated checks and they will give you hints on which places of your code might need to be reworked. And obviously this circle is a bit smaller because you can describe things which you can't check easily, right? So the clean ABAP style guide, for example, says, yeah, use descriptive names for variable names. Now that's rather difficult to check automatically. You can do a bit, right? You can say, okay, if your method has a Boolean returning parameter, then it should be named with something like is or has. So you can do small bits, but to really check whether the um, variable name is semantically descriptive, that's really difficult. Um, but other things can be checked very well, and, and that's done by CodePal for ABAP. Um, but there are also other, um, other tools out there, like um, ABAP OpenCheck, for example, is an open source project on that. Um, and they are all concerned with uh, giving you hints on uh, where your uh, code violates cleanup. 
And then there's the third and smallest circle, which is basically um, automation. So, and that's concerned with the part of clean ABAP that you can really in an automated fashion um, introduce into your code as we saw in ABAP cleaner, right? And again, of course, that's a smaller circle because CodePel can easily say, okay, you have nesting depth 12, that's far too much, but there's no way of automating that, right? To extract a method, yeah, that can be automated to a certain degree, but you can never let a tool decide and then just automate the extraction of a method because you really have to look at what makes sense um, semantically, how do, do I rename the method and, and so forth. So um, a number of checks really can't be automated. But then as hopefully we saw, um, a number of things really can be automated quite well. And the idea is that if you get rid of all that, if you do that with a single uh, shortcut, as with ABAP Cleaner, then of course you have more time to look at the remaining code file checks. Some of those you will never get again because ABAP Cleaner already cleaned it up, but others of course uh, require your manual action and, and that will, um, that will, then you will have more time for that. And then maybe there are more things that can't even be checked, but you simply have to be aware of and help colleagues in code reviews to, to improve their code and so forth. Um, and also here, there are other tools that um, try this automation. For example, CodePal itself has the CodePal Quick Fixes, which also automate in a bit uh, different fashion. And then there are other um, open source tools uh, like the ABAC quick fixes, for example, that also automate. So um, we are all trying to do uh, our contribution to clean ABAP here. Uh, but those are the three projects that you will uh, find on the uh, SAP part of the open source world. Now, this is in a way the um, theoretical uh, graphical representation of what I think happens. I've, I've had a bit of a philosophical discussion here with a colleague whether is the clean ABAP circle really bigger than what you can describe? So is there something in clean ABAP that you will never be able to describe, although it's clean ABAP? So uh, let's not get into that. It's rather philosophical. But uh, I think we can agree that every project is trying to expand their cir circle, right? To try to even describe more and better what clean ABAP is and to find more ways that can be checked and automate more. So we are all working on, on expanding those circuits as far as possible. And um, this would be the, the, um, the ideal uh, way to describe it, but actually in reality, it's a bit different. Um, as you maybe already noticed, there are things that ABAP Cleaner automates for which there are no code belt checks and which are not even described in the clean ABAP style guide. And there's sometimes some discussion about that. Um, basically, um, the idea is here that if we find something where people say, okay, that's actually a nice thing to automate. Um, I don't want to do it manually all the time, um, but there is no check for that. Let me, let me give you an example. So there's no rule that demands um, where is it, that you put spaces around the common sign, right? And maybe you don't even want a rule for that. You don't want the clean ABAP style guide to force you to do that. But a team could easily align and say, yeah, we want that. We, we want to introduce a space because um, we, we like it the way. Then, yeah, it really makes sense to automate that. But uh, to be honest, I wouldn't want this this as a rule in the style guide. And I don't wouldn't want a code pal to give me 5,000 findings uh, on all the places where that's not the case, uh, but it's a very nice thing to automate. So um, basically in the style guide, you find one rule, which maybe helps here, which says be consistent. So format all code of a project in the same way, let all team members use the same formatting style. So that's basically the general key that says, um, yeah, even if something isn't described in detail here in the style guide, it may nevertheless make sense to say, okay, we as a team agree to do that. And, and at least we are more consistent with that. 
if you don't like that, if you say, okay, I actually don't want Ababa Cleaner to automate anything which is not demanded in the style guide, I actually want this approach, then that's very easy. Then you simply use the essential profile. So that's what it was created for. The essential profile is basically saying whenever we can really uh, refer to the style guide demanding exactly this, then that's what the essential profile does. But you are going to miss uh, half of the cleanup rules with that. So just decide for yourself. Uh, but that's um, why and, and how things are here. And uh, one more remark on that. Um, so the people behind that um, are, of course, talking to each other. So um, both in within SAP, we know each other, but also outside of uh, SAP with customers and partners, uh, you will see that in all the open source projects, um, some names appear again and again, and that's really nice. So we um, we are aligning this, and uh, from this alignment, actually, in the case of Abob Cleaner, uh, that's why we introduced the essential profile to, to help here a bit and clarify a bit and uh, creating references uh, to just make everything transparent and so on. So that's a bit the context of uh, the Clean Abob projects and uh, how they relate to each other. Now, um, regarding resources, and that will be my last uh, hint here. Basically, everything that you have on ABAP Cleaner, that's the wrong page, here we are. Um, everything is on the GitHub repository, github.com, SAP, ABAP Cleaner. And uh, we saw already, so this, this gives an introduction, what the tool offers, how it is used. We saw the installation section of it. Um, then how to use it. Actually, here you will also find a description of how to use it from the command line. If you ever want to try that, you have documentation of the shortcuts and, and the elements of the main window and of the configuration window. You have the release notes, which we already saw. You have a list of available cleanup rules. So that's also kind of accessible from the a repository with the examples and so forth. But I think that's actually much better to look at um, inside of uh, of ABAP Cleaner. That's um, just more telling, more interactive, really. Um, and very importantly, you have the issue, issues section, right? So if you ever come across something ABAP Cleaner which um, might look like a bug, so you expect it to behave differently, then just open an issue fast. If you've never done it, it's really easy. You just click new issue and then you start describing to us, uh, look, this is the code and this is what ABAP Cleaner gives me and this is what I would have expected. And then you just submit it. And then uh, we look at it and discuss it and, and um, fix bugs or maybe create a new option for that or maybe even a new cleanup rule and so on. So that would really be very helpful. Um, Especially, of course, if you if you find bugs, um, just to make sure that our cleaner works completely um, as as you would want it, right? Even on older releases, on on all styles of code and so forth. And you see already here. So these are the open issues currently. That there are lots of great ideas. Um, I at least haven't had the time yet to uh, implement all those. But uh, let's see, right? So. By and by, um, ABAP Cleaner is going to grow. And I'm actually really looking forward to that. So please um, interact with us. That, that would be great. Um, post issues that you find. Also, you're, of course, very invited to, to give us a star if you think this is, this is useful. This is really helpful because um, we don't keep track of um, installation. So we, are, we don't know how many people actually uh, install ABAP Cleaner because we don't track that. But if you think it's useful, this is the way to really communicate and, and uh, show all the contributors that, yeah, uh, the, you appreciate that and you use that and you find it useful. And that's definitely motivating. Uh, and, and also sometimes uh, telling manager, look, uh, so many people find that helpful. Um, we, we really uh, can invest here and it helps people. So that was my quick tour. You, of course, you find all the references uh, to the resources here at the end of the presentation, also to the other open source projects. 
And like I said, everything is also linked here on the repository. So that's the basically the one entry point for everything. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you very much uh, for looking at this. And I really hope that you will um, try ABAP Cleaner and find it helpful and uh, hope to see you on the repository. And of course, uh, very happy to answer questions in the Q&A. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, goodbye.